uh, of Hatcher Plus. Ladies and gentlemen, please give him a big round of applause. Hi everyone, how are you all today? Excellent. Hey, uh, put your hand up if you don't want to be part of a billion dollar startup. No hands. Put your hand up if you do want to be part of a billion dollar startup. Why not? Who would not want to be part of a billion dollar startup? That's what we're here to talk about today. We're going to talk about unicorns. Um, first of all, about us. We're one of the most active early stage investors on the planet. Um, in the last three quarters, we've either been the most active early seed stage um, investor or we've been the second um, on the list. And uh, that gives us a lot of, um, we get to see a lot of uh, deals, a lot of stuff that's going on in the industry. It's a pretty fun place to play. This is the um, Pitchbook League tables from last year. You can see at the bottom here, you've got Peter Thiel. Um, number six, you've got White Combinator, 500 startups, number three. We're at number two and Plug and Play is at, at number one. We see a lot of deals. Um, we've looked at, since last September, we've looked at about 10,000 deals we've invested in, 102. Um, the reason that we can invest at such velocity is that we've spent a lot of money and a lot of time building some really amazing technology um, that uh, we think is going to revolutionize venture capital in, in many of the same ways that blockchain is uh, revolutionizing finance. Um, so we, we're using AI and, and predictive data analytics to figure out what's going on in deals at a very, very early stage. We're investing pre-seed. So based on the questions that we ask, we're able to, to figure out what's going on at a very, very early part of a company. We're also building global co-investment partnerships um, with folks that have a lot of deal flow. And that gives us the ability to look and see what's going on in Nairobi, in Dubai, in Mumbai, in Tokyo, in Beijing. We can see a lot about what's going on in the world, and we can use that to build trend analysis data that helps us understand, is it time to stop investing in drones? Is it time to start investing in 5G blockchain fusion? Which is a great panel, by the way. Um, the whole reason that we're doing this is that we want to enable predictable returns. So if you look at the Cambridge Analytics data for the last 20 years, basically you can rely on venture capital delivering you about a 20% IRI year on year. So that's what all the top funds deliver. They deliver 20%. So we've designed an engine that we think will deliver 20%. So that's enough about us. Um, our team, we're all either data geeks or we're bankers. Um, I'm a data geek, I'm a database architect. Um, Dan Hookturp up here is one of the top data scientists in the world. And Dan's the guy that built all of our AI um, and our Python platform. An amazing folk. Uh, these two guys at the bottom here used to run JP Morgan Asset Management Asia. At Sushi used to be CIO for Masayoshi Sun at uh, SoftBank. Trina's worked at several large banks, as you can see here. Winnie is, a, is one of the leading advisors on AI to banks around the world. So that's enough about us. So what we've been doing the last three years is we've been analyzing every single venture deal in the last 20 years. Um, it numbers about 520,000 deals that we've, we've looked at, we've pulled the raw data on, we've structured this data and we've built AI models around the data. And it's just fascinating to look at this data. Um, so what I do at a lot of conferences is I do a deep dive into that data. But a lot of those conferences are really designed to inform investors in that area um, in some really sort of deep areas that they may not have focused on before. What I thought I'd focus on today, given that today's mix is really investors and startups, is unicorns. So unicorns are a migrating species, as it turns out. There's a 700, 375 unicorns in the world. The United States is home to more of these rare beasts than any other country. And I think you're familiar with uh, most of them. Now, what we thought we'd do from the purpose of data is normally when you see unicorns, you see them listed as countries, right? So you see like, you know, US, China, India, you see like everyone listed with number of unicorns per country. And we thought, wouldn't it be fairer and more interesting to list the unicorns on a per capita basis? 
Like, you know, if, if you're population, like if you're Israel and you have 0.1% of the world, but you have 1% of the world's unicorns, isn't it more interesting to know that, unico that Israel's hitting at 9x above its weight? And, and of course, that puts China way down the list, yeah, relative to its population size, and actually makes places like France and Germany look pretty interesting. Korea, where I was just last week giving this same presentation, is way up the list. Isn't that fascinating? The US, interestingly, is still at the top of the list. So that's impressive. But what's interesting is, is when you start looking at what different parts of the data are telling you, you can start to analyze things quite differently. So the US has 47 million immigrants. 51% of all US unicorns have at least one immigrant founder. Four of the top five IPOs last year were by immigrants. So what if we were to treat those immigrants differently, which seems to be something that's politically satisfying for a lot of folks at the moment. Well, actually, if you do that, isn't that interesting? Suddenly, the US immigrants are just by far the top of the list on a per capita basis. So if you're an immigrant, and you, if you're someone that moves to the US, and I used to be a US immigrant from Australia. I went there, I had a green card. So I would have been one of those guys, right, contributing to that, that top shelf piece there. And Israel, by the way, is also a nation of immigrants. So isn't that quite fascinating, the contributions of these immigrants um, to, to unicorns? So immigrants are 7.2x more likely to start a unicorn. Um, here's some US companies that you may have heard that were founded or co-founded by unicorns. You're welcome to write me after this for the, uh, for the slide deck. This is the most comprehensive list that we've found online or that we've, we've created ourselves. Um, but it's everything. Yeah, it's everything from Instagram to Facebook to Apple to Comcast to eBay. Um, isn't that just an amazing list? Here's some immigrants. Now, any list that ends in Steve Jobs and Jeff Bezos um, says something about the power of immigrants in that society. Jeff Bezos is second generation Cuban. Steve Jobs is second generation Syrian. Fascinating. Anyway, that's enough politics. You can tell who this, uh, the, the, uh, the, the audience, I'm actually in the US next week delivering the same, uh, same slide, so I think it'll go down a storm there. So look, let's talk about your chances of investing of, uh, and, and being part of a next unicorn. So we did a ton of research, our 500,000 deals, and we discovered there's a one in 20,000 chance that a startup will become a unicorn. And then the very next week, CB Insights came out and said, well, no, it's a one in 100 chance. So I got on the phone, I said, what the hell's going on here? We determined from that out of every business startup, and we looked at Kaufman data and US Census data, we looked at NASDAQ data, we knew our numbers were right. And CB Insights said, hold on, hold on. What we think is happening here is we're only looking at the externally funded companies. So which is right? Both are right. Both statements are correct. About five out of every 1,000 businesses will get VC funding. About half of 1% will get external funding. I'm not talking about Uncle Joe or Aunt Sally. I'm talking about a VC or an angel that comes in that didn't know you, was impressed by your business and gave you funding. But here's the interesting news. Once you get that funding, your chance of becoming a unicorn rises to one in 100. It's not bad odds. So unicorns are pretty rare. Sometimes the founders really have trouble seeing them. Um, as you can see at the top here, the automobile is only a novelty. The horse is here to stay. That was the president of the Michigan Savings Bank advising one of Henry Ford's right-hand people not to invest in the Ford Motor Company because horses were going to be around for a long time. Television won't last because people will get tired of staring at a plywood box every night. Cellular phones, my favorite, will absolutely not replace local wire systems. That's Marty Cooper, the inventor of the cell phone. These founders couldn't see their deals coming. Steve Chen, in a meeting for his Series A funding, was asked, do you think there's anything to this YouTube thing? He said, look, I just don't think there's going to be that many videos that people are going to want to watch. Come on, he's the co-founder of YouTube and he doesn't think there's a future for it. Oh, by the way, I have my own story here. Um, I, three years ago, I was offered a chance to invest in Bolt. It's called Taxify, it's the corporate name. 
um, Eastern European ride-sharing company. I was offered 5% of the company for $500,000 at a $10 million valuation. We just didn't think it was going to scale out of, outside of Eastern Europe. We weren't sure about the CEO. A few things that we didn't think about. It's just been given $170 million by Mercedes at a $1 billion pre-money valuation, and our stake would now be worth $36 million bucks. Very hard to spot unicorns. Okay, so here's three things. If you're a founder, this is mainly directed at you, but investors, it's also directed at you. These are three things that we think are, are, are good things to look for when you're looking for a VC fundable business. And the first thing I'd say is stop focusing on creating a unicorn. Create a business that does something useful. Create a scalable business that has a $50 million exit. Everyone will be like super, super happy. So the first thing you need to have is you need to have domain expertise. You need to have three guys on the team. One needs to be a sales guy. One needs to be an operating guy. One needs to be an engineer. You need to have someone building the tech, someone selling it, and someone making sure the trains run on time. And it's better if that third person is a bit pessimistic about things, in my experience. You need someone on the team other than a raving, lunatic, optimistic founder. You need someone on there that's just going to pull everyone back and just keep everyone focused on what they're delivering. The second out of these things, which often, often gets missed, is you need to grow at a rate that's acceptable that, that can take in venture capital and do something with it. You need to grow at a fast pace. Now, if you're creating a gas station, you can't grow at a fast pace like that. If you're doing a Dunkin' Donuts franchise, forget it. You're not going to get venture capital money. You need to invent a business that's going to do something that is 3x better than it's ever been done before. That's the magic number, as it turns out in research. And, it, and you need to be able to grow that at three to five X a year. Now, Facebook recently grew its revenue. How long has Facebook been around? Long time, right? Recently grew its revenue 20%, one quarter. That's a venture fundable business. That's what we're looking for. Here's the last thing I'd say and the last thought I'd leave you with is really your startup needs to be a rocket and not a bicycle. I just mentioned a gas station and a Dunkin' Donuts franchise. There's nothing wrong with these things, just like there's nothing wrong with a bicycle. A bicycle is 97% efficient. There's very little that any of you technology wizards can do to reinvent the bicycle and make it better. It's already a 97% 90, efficient use of power coming from here going to the wheels. So the bicycle's kind of done. We don't need to invest in bicycles. What we need to invest in are rockets, and venture capital is rocket fuel. So we're looking for rockets so that we can put our rocket fuel in that rocket. So I'll leave you with this one question. If you're an investor, are the business plans that you're looking at now, are they rockets or are they bicycles? Startups. Is your startup a rocket or a bicycle? Think about that. And once you can answer that question and the, question, and the answer becomes a rocket, you're in great shape for landing venture capital funding and to being on your way to establishing yourself as a unicorn. Thank you. I don't think anyone was expecting me to finish on time. Uh, can I take a short Q&A? Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Uh, good morning, uh, John. This is a really uh, lovely uh, presentation. Uh, thank thank you. you very much. We enjoyed it very much. Uh, one question I'd like to ask is uh, how can a uh, uh, perceived uh, unicorn, if we, the entrepreneur, we think our project is going to be and get attention from you guys and uh, be assessed by your uh, investors? Uh, great question. So, so we have a, a platform that's being used by about 200 over plus VCs and accelerators. So you can apply through our platform if you just push the submit business plan button and then you can choose which one of these guys you want to send the business plan to and it will assess the business plan, see if there's a match for that mandate of, of the company um, and then send the plan um, on to uh, onto those folks. So there is a, a button on our site that you can push. It'll go through, it'll assess it, it'll create a profile. You can go to your profile and you can see um, what we think of the uh, of, of the plan. 
Is it on your website? Yes, on hatcher.com. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, by the way, if anyone wants a copy of this presentation, I usually put it up on my blog. <coughs> Pardon me. But you can also just email me at john at hatcher.com or, or go on um, gohatcher at twitter.com. Sorry? LinkedIn as well, of course. Okay, thanks.